Hello, I'm going to give you an exercise you can do to improve your planing technique. You see a lot of videos on sharpening and tuning and setting up the plane and those are all wonderful and we need those and I want to do those um, but you don't see that much on actual planing. You'll see demonstration but you don't hear that much of anybody telling you how to practice and it does take some practice. Um, what I'm going to do is I have a piece of pine, straight grain, it's easy to work with, make it so, something that's easy for starters. And you learn to read the grain by seeing the lines of the grain drifting off the wood. And if they're going uphill, you'd want to go that way. And if they're going uphill and you plane the other way, you're going against the grain and you don't want to do that. And when they go uphill this way, that means going with the grain is this way. And on the other side, it'd be the opposite way typically. What happens on some woods like oak, it'll rise up to a knot or something. And you're working against the grain in two directions. And that's when you really cannot plane wood. And not all, not all woods can be planed. That's where I go to a number 80 cabinet scraper or... Uh, you might try a low angle plane. I don't have uh, any great love for those. I, I, I don't own that uh, many of them and the ones I own are block planes. So, you know, I might change my tune if I owned a jack plane, for instance, that was a low angle plane. But um, I don't think they're necessary based on all the work I've done without one. However, I'm not saying you shouldn't have one. I'm just saying uh, it's not something that I have ever struggled with that much that I needed the plane. Uh, I would just go to a number 80 cabinet scraper and you can do some light sanding and you can get past the problem. Um, when it's in the surface of the wood and you have some width to work with uh, and on the edge and you have that kind of opposing grain, sometimes what you can do is do up to the problem area from both directions and then just finish the area. That's what I do and that's why standard planes always work for me. And then the little bit of cleanup that I need, I do with a cabinet scraper. This is a cabinet scraper. This is a card scraper and they both, either one may solve your problem. Um, back to this, this grain is rising up. So to plane with the grain, we'd want to go this direction. What I'm going to tell you to do is take a pencil we're on this easy piece of pine and make some lines. I have another video that I'm, I'm going to post where I just sharpen this plane. So I know it's sharp, I know it's set right. And I state elsewhere in videos that service planing, um, I start at this end and work backwards. So I'll, do, I'll drop in and cut. I'm good to here, then I'll come to here and then raise. So I'll just show you. Dropped in and cut, see the lines are gone, a little bit missing there. That tells me my technique is not good at the end. You want to push all the way to the end, bearing down here, and just light pressure here. 99% of the force is this way, not down. Let the plane do the work. You know, I can just barely, not even press on it, just push it. And the plane is pulling in and, and wanting to cut. Okay, see, I am plane now to here. There's no ridge or anything. Right here's a little nick. Take that out. This is now smooth and I'm half done. So when I plane here, I'm going to lift. Now, I could stop right there. There's a little bit of a, a transition there. I'm going to take this side off and this is just glistening and and you're done you cannot get that any other way in our 21st century with all of our technology all of our power tools all the crap we have you cannot get this any other way than what we just did here in seconds so i you know this argument's being waged all the time about hand tools this is why you want at least to have hand planes in your shop the stop, by the way, I'll just show you. It's in other videos. Three quarters by quarter inch plywood. You can turn it either way. Clamp it in the vise and you have an excellent planing stop. 
It's a lot better than a single little point or a little square one in the bench. Don't mess with that. Even your dog on your vise, don't mess with that. Make yourself some of these. Get yourself a big surface area. Clamp it in. I use the quarter the most. I clamp it in and you can raise it. You know, if it's too low for a bigger piece, go ahead and raise it a little. Thinner pieces, you need thinness here, so I use that. You know, if you notice, I had it up in the midpoint and then clamped it about there and clamp it down good. You have more surface area because you're not going to clamp, need to clamp this piece. You just need to support it. You can clamp tight to the edge if that's comfortable. You can move in a little. I like to go in a little. Like I said, this is an exercise that you can do to practice your technique. You can tell whether you're playing. If you're entering dead straight and your plane's only cutting on one side, you need to slide this. When you go this way, it lifts the iron. The side that you push this to is lifting the iron. So if you're cutting too much on this side, push it toward there and it'll pull it away. So you need to experiment with that. What you're looking for is the whole width of the iron to cut. And your plane is set level. Then you decide on depth. with your adjustment knob. You know, out pulls it up, screwing it clockwise pushes it down. It's actually reverse thread though. It moves the opposite way of what you would think. So I'm done to here. I can start right in square, lift, move over, overlap the cuts, lift, and I'm done. So that, that's a little practice there that you can try a drill. Um, don't assume that because the grain was this way that it automatically works this way, going that way. It may need to flip, and in this case it does. You can see the lines going this way, so I had to flip it. Now I should get perfect cut with the grain and perfect width. When you're setting it on edge is a good way to set this and the depth. Put a piece of wood on the bench, make a cut. You can tell right off the bat whether you're getting a skewed shaving to one side or the other. You can tell how thick you are and if you need to back off. You're always adjusting, always micro adjusting. That's Paul Sellers' term, micro adjustment. And that's a, I love that term because that's what you're doing. You are a human being interacting with this wood. You are not a machine. You uh, are introducing the human element into a piece of work. We're not talking about perfection. In some cases we're talking about beyond the perfection of hand tool or power tools. In other cases we're not talking about the perfection of power tools. We're talking about the human element introduced into the work that no other method can achieve and it adds the charm and character to a piece because a human being interacted with it and it was made by somebody that cared. That's the difference between cramming stuff through a machine and being in a rush and trying to just turn it into money which is a, a, a rabbit chase anyway. Trying to get rich from woodworking is like herding chickens. It's not going to happen. You have to do this because you want to and you're trying to make something of enduring value with some charm and some humanity in it, not something made by a robot, not something robotically crammed through a machine or ro robotically crammed together. That's my philosophical lecture. That's a lot of crap to some people. I orient my life around it because um, I don't want to be replaced by machines. I want to do something that it may not be art, but it's my attempt to make it artistic, and it's, it's integrity. It's integrity that I interacted with this piece, I put my heart into it, I put an element of myself into it, and tried to make you a long-lasting, enduring piece that was well worth the money you paid for. Um, so there's my lecture. Like I say, it may be a bunch of philosophical crap to some people, but I orient my life around that, and uh, it's something for you to think about.
So thank you for watching. I hope this drill will gain your experience in using in using hand planes and making them work for for you. If all you have is a plane, a little baby one, start there and practice. But you need to get yourself a number four plane and you can do 90% of anything you ever want to do with a number four hand plane. When you find good buys, pick up other planes, and you might be surprised at how some perform as compared to others. This is an old record and cuts. Uh, I bought it new in 90 and it cuts exceptionally thin. It'll cut thinner than any plane that I own, including these Miller's Falls that I restored, which is a good plane. It has a lot of backlash in it, but it's a good plane. I struggle with it sometimes because of the backlash and to get a thin enough cut. This record I can cut down to just almost nothing and it just goes and goes. So I wish they were still making these planes because they're wonderful cutters. They just plain work. And in 1990 I probably gave uh, around $60 for this plane. So I wish they were still making these but if you see them on eBay they're great planes, um, and I highly recommend them. I like the Miller's Falls. I like the Stanleys. Here's a 1950s, probably 1950s Stanley, number four. Plain Jane, everyday workman's plane. Just cuts beautifully, um, so that will service you well. And there's other ones out there. Uh, the Fullers sometimes are good, and the Fulton is sometimes good. Craftsman is sometimes good. Uh, I've had bad Craftsmans. They look good, but they don't cut good. I've had uh, several brands that I really like, but the Miller's Falls, the Stanley, and the Record are unbeatable. I, I do not have the fancy Lee Nelson uh, high dollar planes. I know they're probably good. Um, I don't know about good for the money. Clifton, uh, if I was going to spend a little bit more, if I was going to go buy a new plane, I'd probably buy a Wood River for the money. I think it's it's got some uh, innovative designs to it too that make me want to try the plane. So I probably will buy a number four, or number four and a half uh, Wood River, probably the four and a half. Uh, that they caught my eye in the last several years and I've resisted it, but I probably would try that plane. But anyway, I hope there's something here that's useful to you and have a good day and thanks for watching.